What's going on guys? K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today. Now it is a boring start to this week on Monday. Bitcoin barely moving, the S&P barely moving. Now obviously there's been a lot of talks, a lot of FUD about what's happening in China spreading to a potential global recession. Could that affect Bitcoin? We talked about that yesterday. What could really happen? What are the implications? Or again, is it just a bunch of FUD? Is BlackRock really just trying to freak everyone out so that they can buy cheap? Well, I want to look at what's going on in the charts today. I don't want to waste anybody's time. There's really not much going on in the news, but I want to talk about what I'm seeing right now because there are some indicators that we've used over and over again that are showing us some very conflicting data, whereas everyone else is calling for this mega crash, recession, doom and gloom, and yet we're still not really seeing that happen specifically in the charts. In fact, the recent Bitcoin fall wasn't even as big as the previous two dips on the way up to 30,000, right? So we're going to dive in super quick. Like I said, I don't want to waste you guys time today. I understand that your time is precious. So mostly just want to talk about charts. There's not a lot going on in the news right now, but stick around to the end because I have some very interesting data that I feel, especially if you're new to the market, if you're feeling down or you're worried about what's going on or you're bored or maybe you even lost some money, I think it's going to help to clarify a lot of your conviction to maybe why you got in these markets in the first place. So if that sounds good to you, you know what to do if you're not subscribed and also shout out to all my new subscribers. My goodness, we, we've been getting a lot of subscribers over these past few days. So thank you so much for all the support, especially during this crappy market. You guys know I will continue to bring you the most up-to-date content. And of course, I do just want a friendly reminder, if you're interested in going to Bitcoin Amsterdam, these events are generally very fun. Bitcoin Miami, Bitcoin Nashville is coming up. So if you want over here, check the link below, guys. I have a 10% off if you're interested. Just enter the code ZOMBIE and you know, you'll be good to go. So check that out if you are interested. Now, Here's the problem right here. You can see right now that we have closed below the EMA ribbon. Now, the previous few times that we fell below it, you can see right here, that was a wick, we instantly got bought back up. That was a wick, we instantly got bought back up, right? And you can see historically, when we do tend to actually fall below it pretty bad, we tend to kind of stay down in that area for a while, right? Before coming back up. And unfortunately, on this lower time frame, on this weekly, that is what we're seeing. So considering that we are sitting below it, what I would like to see, and now keep in mind, we have the entire week to do this, I would like to get back into this ribbon at least just to this lower level at around 26,800 or so, right? We don't need to get all the way back up to the top. We don't need to have a massive God candle reversal. I would just like to see us get back up in there if we want to maintain that bullish sentiment. Now, something super interesting is if we look at the Fibonacci retracements right here, you can actually see that we have been respecting this area quite well. Look at this. We perfectly came down and respected the 0.38, right? So some people say, well, if we're going to look at a full retracement, then we have to come all the way down to the 0.618. The 0.618 Fibonacci is sitting at around 21,600. Are we going to get down to that level? I, Like I said, I'm not too sure, guys, because the next one is around 23,609. But it's really, really interesting to just see how Bitcoin really just interacts with some of these levels. You know, it's just very, very interesting. You can actually use these Fibonacci levels really if you're just looking for some quick swing trades they do tend to work and of course as we saw over here the rsi hasn't been this oversold since the covid crash so a lot of these things are potentially suggesting a move to the upside but yet you know this morning i'm watching the s p open over here and as you can see the s p is having an extremely indecisive day today right it opened it pumped up pumped back down and now it's kind of back at the same level that it started and unfortunately bitcoin is doing somewhat of the same thing we still haven't gotten that full on decoupling. I think it's coming. I think in the next few years, you will see Bitcoin decouple from stocks. We've seen it on occasion here or there, but it, you know, on the grander scheme, it always kind of stays correlated. And when the stocks are falling, Bitcoin tends to fall a little bit harder. When stocks are pumping, Bitcoin pretty much annihilates, right? But we do also have the CME futures gap up here at around 27,005. So really, again, I just, you know, I, I don't want to be a broken record here. As long as we continue to put in higher lows and higher highs and we don't break this massive upward structure. Yeah, we broke this structure right here. But as I said, we were not going parabolic. So it didn't really matter to me. We didn't break a parabolic structure. We just had a nice little sort of up step trend, you know, and then we came back down again. So not too concerned about that. Also, again, I, I just wanted to discuss that. If you guys have paid attention, we've talked about these hash ribbons before. Now, you know, not trying to be over bullish. Who knows? Maybe history's not going to repeat again. Maybe we're going down to 20. But as you guys can see in the past, if we actually shorten this chart up here, 
you could see that basically whenever we get these buy signals, it is amazing opportunities for accumulation. I think the only time that these were really ever wrong was this buy signal right before COVID. But even right there, you still from bottom to top had an 80% pump before we had the COVID crash. And you know, you could zoom in right here. Look right here. This was telling you to buy down in this area. Now keep in mind, it doesn't mean like, oh, buy right now and then the price pumps. But look, right here, they were telling us to buy. What did we have? We had a few months of sideways and then boom, right? Right here, this right here, boom. That was the pump. This one here, same thing. This one here, same thing. I mean, they've basically never really been wrong, right? So yeah. I mean, look, this buy right here, if you had bought, even if you had bought at 20,000, you still could have rode it up to 30. And we just got that again. We just got another buy. And that buy was at 28. Now, keep in mind, we're down at around 26. So, yeah, the buy is saying that, you know, you should buy and it went down. But historically speaking, even if it just has a few weeks of sideways, in fact, the one time we had two months of sideways, but then we continued to pump anyway. So it's still statistically showed a good time for buying. If you just look at this Kaufman close, this is a version of the Gaussian channel, Gaussian channel, you could see right here that, you know, these are really good indications of when we've sort of really flipped the trend. It's a lagging indicator, so you're not gonna get the exact bottom, you're not gonna get the exact top, but look right here. It flips to green right around 3,500. Bitcoin goes up to 14. Then it flips bearish at around 11. And Bitcoin, well, COVID crashed, but without the crash, it dips down to seven, right? I mean, I'm not cherry picking here. You can look through this entire chart and you could look, just see with your own eyes where it changes, right? We flip to red here. That's around 45. Bitcoin goes down to 29. Flips to green here. That's around 36. Bitcoin goes all the way up to 67, right? And you can see right here, we had this uh, potential red, but it got invalidated. And also, if you want to see something even crazier, if we switch this to the monthly, generally speaking, now you'll notice we stay in the green trends a lot longer than we stay in the red trends. This is one of the longest red trends that we've stayed in since back here, which is also why I've been saying that this bear market does resemble 2015 a little bit more than the others. But as soon as we get a green, you know, right here, as soon as we flip green, we stay green for a very long time, right? As soon as we flip green, okay, we had a little bit of a fake out right here, but that was only one month, one month, right? And then it flipped back green again. So it tends to stay green for a very long time. And, you know, as you guys can see right here, currently we have flipped green again. So basically in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is it doesn't mean that we can't come down and have healthy retests, right? We do have this major trend and we do have this legacy trend that dates all the way back to when we had the COVID crash and one that goes back even farther down here to this dip that we had on July 17th, uh, excuse me, of July of 2017. And you know, if we come all the way up here and we see what we're looking at, yeah, it still means that could we, you know, come up, have a little bit of a fake out, maybe come back down, retest this. Yeah, I mean, 24, 23, why? Why couldn't it be possible? But I just don't think you're gonna get those super low 20K or 1918, unless we do have like some crazy, you know, literally like recession where the whole world is collapsing and we're having Evergrande basically be the Lehman Brothers moment over in China. Okay, maybe, right? But technically speaking, it's looking like a healthy market thus far to me. It's looking like massive accumulation. And we're also starting to see the dollar weaken out again as it approaches this level of 104.6. So if the dollar does continue to weaken, falling to the downside, well, you know what happens. You know how that inverse relationship goes. So if you guys are looking to trade, make sure that you check out the tutorial popping above. Anybody who got that 25-3 call should still be in profit. If you haven't taken profit yet, that's totally up to you. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we called it, it was there, you took the long, you know, if you didn't take your profit, that's up to you. Um, but I do just want to offer a bit of warning. I saw this this morning. So Andrew Kang apparently went long on Bitcoin, Ethereum and ARB after the crash on the 18th, but all of his positions were liquidated. He was liquidated 14 times in total and lost $432,000 in a day. So why am I telling you this? Because if you're going to use leverage, leverage is an amazing tool if you use it properly if you use it responsibly, okay? So if you do wanna learn how to properly trade and not get liquidated, I do recommend again that you check out my tutorials. Uh, maybe there's one popping up above right now. Again, you could check out $56,000 in bonuses below, but do not use this crazy high leverage. It's not necessary. And you can also open up 
multiple different, you can go long and short at the same time, okay? You don't have to always be all in one way or all in the other way. You can hedge and definitely don't be using 100X. I don't even know why these guys offer it. I really think it's just a gimmick. Um, but yeah, don't do that, guys. So <laughs> Mike McGlone, um, before I get to the positives, just real quick, he's a little bit bearish. Now, I like Mike McGlone, but again, you know, he's been screaming bearish for a while now like he's been screaming bearishness since the bottom so he's saying that what we're seeing right now with bitcoin versus stocks in the 1930s it looks very similar obviously we know what happened in the 30s it was the great depression it, you know it was a terrible time so he's extremely bearish right now on bitcoin but one thing that i do want to just mention and i want to end on this because i don't want to take too much time there's not really a, a lot of news to talk about today guys nothing really crazy um but this was an amazing uh, little tweet over from Bitcoin Apex talking about 8 billion people in the world, 21 million Bitcoin, 4 million are lost forever. Satoshi has his one. Um, then we have 1.5 destined to mine. So just like listen to this math. And this is what I'm talking about. So he says 14.5 million divided by 8 billion. If we delete six decimal places from the dividend and divisor of the equation, we get 14.5 Bitcoin for every 8,000 people. Just to put it into very simple to understand numbers, right? Imagine 8,000 people scrambling to drink the last 14.5 liters of liquid. I'm a stupid American and I didn't know what 14.5 liters is, but it sure doesn't sound like a lot. When the last piece of fiat money is dying, one Bitcoin is worth so much immeasurably, no one will be able to comprehend the magnitude. One Bitcoin will carry an amount of value that few understand how much value even one tenth of a Bitcoin has. Even in 20 years, when in 2020, 2044, the blocks uh, subsidy will be for the first time below 10% of Bitcoin. We will probably never understand how much value this 10th part of 100,000 Satoshis will be in our society. We are so damn early. Take the chance. And again, as fiat debasement continues, as the money printer inevitably will be turned on, as people lose their faith in banks and more banks continue to collapse and people realize again, like I was saying the other day in the video, you know, okay, maybe the ETF doesn't get approved, whatever, but it's going to eventually get approved at some point. You know, it's not if, it's when. And again, these guys, they're not going to buy 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. They're going to buy whole numbers. They're not, this is how humans are. They're going to want at least one. There's not enough though. There's not enough for each human on earth to have one Bitcoin, not even remotely close. So just pointing that out, guys. I wanted to end on that. Of course, if you guys do want to Put your money away in a hardware wallet. I do rec uh, recommend Engrave. And if you guys want 10%, you can use the uh, the link below in the description. But that's it for me today, guys. I know not too much news to go over. I just want to let you know what I'm looking at. Yes, there is still possibilities of drawdowns. There is still possibilities of having wicks and retesting some of these lower levels. But we are having a little bit of mixed signals because while everyone's calling for doom and gloom, everyone's saying that stock markets are going to crash. It's going to be this huge recession. What we're seeing really in the charts is just nice, healthy, accumulation with very normal drawdowns and pullbacks. So until we see something catastrophic, something insane, something that just jumps off the paper, or we start putting in lower lows, then we can change our tune. But there's really no reason to be like full on bearish right now. You know, bearish to neutral right now, just kind of wait it out and see again where the markets go. But I still think there is that possibility of putting in higher highs by the end of this year. Now, if we break down structure, then I will admit it. I'll just say, hey guys, I was wrong. I was totally wrong, but right now I'm sticking by it because I'm just not seeing that yet. So that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Hope you're having an awesome day. Again, if you want to learn how to trade, make sure you check out these tutorials popping up right here, right now. There's also more of them in the recommended videos below. Lots of opportunities for all those bonuses. Until next time, guys, enjoy your week. Hope you're having a great, and be safe. You know, don't get crazy with the trading. Until next time, I love you. You're awesome. Stay crypto, and of course, peace out.